All right, so if you manage to get this to work, you've got your app has the ability to take photos. What you do with it then is, is your next step. But I took a photo and then my image displays and it's huge. We have a couple of ways to deal with this. We have one quick and dirty way to deal with this is CSS. Let's do it like this. We, we shouldn't quite do it like this, but just for this to work, we're going to write some inline CSS. If you go back to your HTML code, we've got an image tag. Display an image. and It'll display it raw right out of your camera sensor. With a little CSS, we can constrain it. Let's do this. Go back to line 63 where you've got your image tag. And right after source uh, parameter and before ID, we will add style. <coughs> we will add width colon 100% semicolon. So with that, what this will do is any picture that is taken will be put into this container and it will stretch out to be 100% the width of the view port, the width of your screen. And so if you've got a small device, it'll shrink it down to whatever pixels, 200. If you've got a big device, it'll shrink it down to 500 pixels, whatever. If you've got landscape and portrait views, it'll still shrink it and grow it depending on the size of your screen. And just for this to work, quick and dirty, it works. It's not the best because we should not be writing inline style like this. We should be writing it in the CSS file and all of that. We don't have time for that. But the idea is, with some CSS, we can constrain the size of this image. That's one way. The other way is if that I look inside of the Cordova documentation, in it, it has the features to be able to constrain the size of your picture if we added more options. Um, at this point, it puts the photo on screen, but let me run my code again on my real device. You saw a moment ago, I still have it here, you saw that my picture is huge, I can't, I can't see myself. Uh, I'm going to run this with this newly written CSS code about style. And what I wanted to do is to also save, I wanted to save the picture onto the memory card because at the moment, on my real device, if I exit the app and go over to, on my device, I can go over to the gallery on my device, I can go to gallery. I don't have the photo I just took of myself. It's not saved anywhere. I never specified that. So the computers are very, again, they're dumb. They don't know what you want. You have to program them exactly to make it do what you want. I would have assumed take a photo and also save it somewhere permanently. Nope. We never specified that, so it won't. The documentation will tell us how to save an image permanently. save to photo album so basically this is saying we add one more option called save to photo album spelled exactly like that and we have the values boolean of either true or false there's only true or false and so when my thing here is done, I'll actually show you what that means, but where's mine so far? Oh, I ran it on the emulator. Okay. Anyway, uh, here's the difference. Okay, I'm going to take the photo here. It's a big old photo. Take a photo. Click OK. There's a device. I mean, there's the picture on the device. It shrunk down now. 100% the width of the, of, the, of the device. You won't see too much of a difference on the emulator. But on a real device, you should. You should see that your picture is not huge anymore. It actually shrunk it down to the size of your <coughs> viewport, the screen of your project. Can you turn your code again for where you're saving it? I haven't added it yet. Oh, I'm about to get there. I just want to confirm that my device shrinks down my picture. 
but what I need to do is add save to photo in my code right here. If you go back to your JS code, I shouldn't really edit it while it's compiling it, so I'll have to wait. But um, <coughs> almost here. So, okay, it's going to load up. Okay, so my code, um, here we go. The way to actually also save it to the camera, notice the syntax here. On success, on fail, options, curly brace, close curly brace. First option, quality, comma. Second option, destination type, comma. So on line 49 or so, after your destination type, add a comma there, enter, and then we will add save to photo album, capital T, capital P, capital A, colon, space true. We have an option called destination type, an option called quality, an option called save to photo album, and each one is defined that it accepts certain values. The save to photo only accepts true or false, and the default is false. So here I'm forcing it to, when I take a photo, save it to the photo <coughs> album as well. I pressed enter to move it to its own line, which was optional. I could have kept all of this on one long line, but I broke this into separate lines. Just like the examples up here for the for the prompts and such, that could have been all one long line. But for readability, the first option, comma, enter, the second option, comma, enter, so forth, so forth. The last option does not have a comma. The last option does not have a comma. Right here, the beta URL was the last option previously, no comma, no comma. I've added one more option, so I need a comma there, make sure you got a comma. One more option, last option, no <coughs> comma, no comma. And because it's a Boolean, there's no uh, function on the syntax you have to have. The syntax is that you choose either a true or a false. So let's see if mine wants to behave here. Taco run Android. And remember, uh, it's in the notes somewhere, but if yours is not quite behaving in that it's going to the virtual device instead of the real device, this is a possible way to force it to do that. Taco run Android space dash dash, two dashes there, device. And again, this is more impressive on a real device. You can get away with a lot of this testing on a virtual device or the browser, but some stuff you really need a real device. You can test the photo somewhat in the browser if you've got a web camera. Um, and of course we've seen that we can test it on a virtual device. You see that little square running around. But if you want a real test on a real camera, you need a real device. Oops. And if I, as I said here, what you need to do also is uh, make sure that the device is properly set up and running. For some reason now it forgot that my device is not working, so I'm just going to unplug it and replug it in. I did not plan this, but hopefully that wakes it up. Sometimes it's just a matter of doing it again. So the same photo, was it supposed to give us an option to... It'll save it automatically. Exit your app. Go to your photo album and find your find your photo in there. Let me try it again. I'm just gonna do it again. I unplugged it, replugged it. Let's see if it behaves this time. I forgot to do device dash device. Let's see if it does it. There we go. So now it did see it here. It did see my device. If you have an eagle eye, you'll see either no target specified or whatever, you'll see the name of your device. Mine's right there.
Did you find anything out of that? You didn't find anything out of that research? Uh, well, one of the things was to you know, clear the cache, but that didn't seem to fix it. Hmm. So I will continue. So I took a photo. I took a photo of the class for memories. I'm going to click OK <laughs> on that. It did, lo it did load up the class photo right there, shrunken into the size of my device, just like I wanted. Let me con let me confirm mine. So I'm gonna go back to my home, my home screen. I'm gonna go to my app folder, I'll open my gallery. My particular one has galleries, and then I see a download. I see a folder called Phone Download, DSIM, Screenshot, Snapchat, Vine, Instagram, Periscope, uh, DCIM. Hmm. Sometimes what happens also, if it's not, it doesn't seem to be saving on mine, but sometimes what happens is you need to unplug the device mm -hmm. because then the memory card is getting accessed by the computer. So let me check mine. I'm going to load up my app again. Load the camera, take a photo, click OK. Go to my gallery. He says earlier that uh, he said you are eyes to work down. Oh, okay. Let me confirm that. See, there are these little details to look at. Um, save to photo album, destination type. Oh, yes, look at that. This is what we're forgetting, perhaps. Data URL, file URI. <coughs> file URI. That seems to be correct, perhaps. Okay, so it seems to be here. We have to set save to photo album, true, but um, destination type, file, underscore, URI. Mm. All capital letters and make sure it's URI. Because it didn't save it to the album. Because it what? It did not save it to the album on your yeah. device. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what we're seeing. It's not, it's not saving to the album, but we also need to specify a web. We need to specify a path to that photo. Now I am seeing I am seeing something slightly different also. 
um, in the example code here, it's saying file URI. And notice the image source is slightly different. The image source here is not specifying that part that says JPEG. So if this works or not, that's OK. We're out of time. Um, and it's going to be one of these little tweaks here, but it, it does work. I've tested it before off the top of my head. Maybe I'm missing something slightly small, but it is here in the documentation. Notice on that one up there, it says image source data image JPEG <coughs> image data, whereas this one is not saying JPEG data. It's just saying the address. So there might also be a slightly different thing there. So again, if it's not working, that's OK. Um, did it work? Did it not work? It did not work. OK. Now it doesn't populate the image uh, tag. Most likely then because of that, we still got the data image in there. Okay, so for the moment, uh, attention everyone, um, we'll, we'll wrap up at this point. I'm just going to check that mine works, and then I'm going to put my code into the network folder. And um, we're going to wrap up the main lecture at this point, have a little lab time. And uh, the point of today was to look at, we've got this world of plugins over at the Cordova website to tap into now. These are the official 19 apps or, or 19 plugins or so that lets us do a variety of things, like the camera, vibration, etc. We'll um, go into more detail with this later, but what you could do is you could explore, you could do, you could do a search for Cordova, NPM plugins, Cordova NPM plugins. That should take you over to, because I never remember the name, npmjs.com, blah, blah, blah. If you search for that, you should see a result that says Cordova plugins NPM. Do you recall early on in the instructions, there's an instruction that says NPM install taco. NPM is Node. NPM is the Node Package Manager. It's the software that lets you install more software. And so there's a whole repository out there with, the, with these official 19 plugins and literally thousands more of other people's code that they've invented for you to run on <coughs> a Cordova app. We'll look at this together later, but if you go to that address and explore and search, you will find here's how to use the barcode scanner plugin, here's how to use the Bluetooth plugin, this plugin, that plugin, etc. So that's something for you to look at between now and next time or the weekend. At the moment, uh, we'll wrap up here. I'll double check my code and put it in the network folder. And that's it. Any general questions? Yes. So are we getting to a point where I can write a, uh, some application say it's in the common package and expect it to work on a, and look good on a widescreen, a laptop, a tablet, and a mobile device? And if it's running off a mobile device, maybe I can, it'll also have a barcode reader or other things, but one piece of software to run anywhere. That's our goal, definitely. That's what all of Taco, all of Cordova is supposed to do. For it to look nice on all of them, we've used jQuery Mobile from last month, which is supposed to grow and shrink depending on the size of your monitor, and with some tweaks to take advantage of a widescreen tablet, to take advantage of a portrait mobile device like this, to take advantage of a big old TV. So with jQuery Mobile, to take care of our interface, and with Cordova slash Taco to take care of the functionality, yes, we're creating one project that is deployable to everything. Instead of having to know individual code and, indiv and rewrite our app for all the languages. But the responsive part of it, being on a mobile or a, on a white screen, that's, that's a CSS. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's yeah, CSS. And for us, it's being taken care of with, uh, with jQuery Mobile. Say that again.
it's it's being taken care of with jQuery Mobile, the jQuery Mobile Foundation that we worked with last month. That's the CSS that takes care of our project looking well on all devices. So one last little thing. I did change my code just like the example says. The example, which was the second example here, file URI and remove the data image stuff. It took a photo of me. I go back to my home. I go back to my gallery. And then the very last photo taken, it's hard to see, but you can come up here, is the photo. It is in my photo gallery. Jocelyn, can you confirm right here? Do I see myself <laughs> right here? <laughs> there we go. Chengdar, can you confirm? Can you confirm so mine, mine actually just did it right now, too. It started going up to Google. So it saved it. What's that? Ex exactly. Not the whole thing, just the quotes here. I took off quote and the plus there. Because that example down here, image source, image data. It's URI, don't worry about that. Image data, yeah. put it into that source. Up uh, here it has show JPEG data. This is no longer JPEG data, it's file address data. So that's why we don't want that anymore. And the plus symbol. So I'm gonna put my code in out, I'm gonna put my code in the network folder in just a moment so we can all have it, but yes. When you, you took that out right now, yeah. I and didn't change that in my file and say finally. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, started uploading the Google Drive and drive oh. now. <laughs> so I'll put my code in the network folder now, but here's my final edits. File URI instead of data URL. And then image source is simply the image data. You don't even have to put image URI here because whatever this is called, we just use it here. This could be called kitty cat, and it'll work here as long as you're consistent. And then we took out show JPEG data. This is no longer JPEG data. It is path, file path data. So that's why that worked. So let me save all of this, close it up. I'll put it in the network folder, and that'll be it for the day. If you need any help, call me over.